After 10 years of being out, the modding community surrounding Skyrim has created thousands and thousands of mods. In fact, Skyrim Special Edition is now at over 1.2 billion mod downloads on the Nexus alone. And recently, we've been experiencing extreme breakthroughs in modding technology, and frankly, some of the best mods we've ever seen. But amongst all of this progress, it becomes difficult to keep track of the sheer multitude of impressive mods that are created, and some sadly get lost in the endless grey pages of the Skyrim Nexus. In this series, I'm showcasing six top quality mods every week that have been missed by the community, but fortunately discovered by me. This is Skyrim Mods Hidden Gems, Week 4. Let's start at the first hidden gem, and a great one for anyone who thought the vanilla Skyrim weapon selection was a bit thin. Skyrim Weapons Expansion, by Not Total and various authors, with 94,000 downloads. While not exactly very hidden for a hidden gem, I feel like not many people have actually heard of this mod, as I've never noticed any hubbub surrounding it, well, anywhere. Skyrim Weapons Expansion does what it says on the tin. It adds tons of weapons to the game. Over 100, in fact. What makes this particular mod unique is how high quality, balanced, and well distributed the weapons are. You've heard of similar mods, like immersive weapons, but Skyrim Weapons Expansion succeeds where mods like those fail, by making absolutely sure that every weapon added is high quality enough to become your main weapon. Additionally, the damage values of the weapons have been purposefully adjusted from fairly standard to quite strong in order to fit right in with the game world. And the cherry on top is this mod gives you three ways to add these weapons to the leveled lists, meaning you'll get full loot integration pretty much regardless of your mod configuration. Currently, this is the best weapon pack on the Nexus in my opinion. However, this mod suffers from what I would call an unfortunate overabundance of swords. But with the quality of these models, you can never have too much of a good thing, I say. Let's just hope the mod author adds some weapon variety in a future update. Maybe some shields, too. Now that our Dragonborn has been armed, let's take a look at getting him some protection. This next mod comes from Gearshout, and it is the amazing new Black Bear Ancient Nord Armor, with 2,000 downloads. The fascinating thing about this mod is that it's mostly a vanilla armor mashup, yet it feels completely fresh and original. Judging from the many vanilla mashup armor sets on the Nexus, it seems like it's quite difficult to put existing armor pieces together in a way that balances the game's art style with visual clarity, while making sure the set looks protective and also doesn't end up feeling reused or bland. Impressively, this armor manages to check every one of those boxes. I love the furs and cloth in between each armor piece. They give the set a nice feeling of unity, a feeling which is also exemplified in my favorite part of the armor, the color. Black Bear Ancient Nord armor doesn't suffer from typical problems black armors do, as a good portion of the armor is not black at all, and the parts that are, are mostly underneath, so you don't lose visual detail in the darkness. It generally has a dark feel, but manages to avoid feeling outright evil or sinister like other black armors unfortunately do. The best part about this mod is there are actually multiple armor sets and options. The heavy set comes with multiple head options, helmet, armored hood, and lowered hood. Then there's the light armor version, which also comes with an armored hood or lowered hood. Finally, we have a Berserker chest piece for all you crazy people out there. And let's not forget the shield that goes with the set. Then there's even an optional file that colors the set a more vanilla brown instead of black. The amount of options in this mod are outstanding. Now that we're fully equipped, let's see if we can add a bit of a voice to our character, shall we? Our 
our third mod would be perfect for someone tough or old, or an orc. Introducing Dragonborn Shouts Revoiced by It's Your Boy Brandy Boy, with 3,000 downloads. Listen to this. Fus Revoicing every single dragon shout, this awesome mod will instantly make your Dragonborn five times deeper, grittier, and grizzled er. The great strength of this mod is obviously the quality of the voice acting. Top notch. The weakness, of course, is that it won't fit every character. An elf or beast race character might not be the best fit. Now I'm breaking the rules a bit here, but this mod also has a companion mod. Dragonborn Grunts, revoiced, by the same mod author and voice actor. All of your combat grunts will now be just as gruff and grizzled as your shouts. I feel like this mod would be great if you wanted to roleplay a, a slightly more vocal Doom guy in Skyrim. Anyway, we've now got quite the voice, but what if we need somewhere to live? Next up, we have a very welcoming and customizable new home. Autumn Gate, a believable player home by Siborn, with 2,000 downloads. A very simple home, featuring a living room, bedroom, cellar, patio, and dock, Autumn Gate provides a special home that fits right in with the world of Skyrim. It's not just immersive, it feels like it came with the game to begin with. Located across the bridge from Iverstead, at the edge of the rift, this home is all the way downriver from Riften. This keeps it relatively close to civilization, but allows it to have its own space in the world. The home itself is fairly standard and well-crafted, but where this mod shines is in the aforementioned customizability. The full version of the home comes with lots of homey clutter and crafting equipment such as a tanning rack, workbench, grindstone, forge, smelter, and alchemy table. However, the mod author has provided an additional main version which comes with greatly reduced clutter. You can also get both high and low clutter versions with or without the crafting equipment. Additionally, you can install the enchanting table add-on, which provides, of course, an enchanting table that resides uniquely outside under a roofed patio next to the dock. Finally, as a role player, my favorite addition is the purchasable house add-on, which allows you to purchase the home from Wilhelm, the innkeeper in Iverstead's Vilemere Inn for 12,000 septums. I saw this mod on the Nexus and just had to feature it. Few player home mods can match this level of customization. Huge kudos to Saborn, the mod author. So now that we live here in the Rift, let's add another place in the hold to visit. For our fifth mod, a lovely little village on the northern slopes of the Jarl Mountains. This is Reich Korrigit by Schlitzor with 2,000 downloads. As someone who enjoys unusual town layouts, Reich Korrigit has got to be one of the coolest settlement mods I have ever seen. The verticality gives the whole village a rough and rural vibe. Standing at any lower elevation and looking up at the rest of the town creates this strange feeling of nobility, the strength of the buildings constructed directly into the mountainside, representative of the strength of the great Nord clans that live here. While the settlement is quite strange in its geography, as I've mentioned, it very much is a real, functioning little village with an inn, alchemist, wizard, fence, shrine, blacksmith, as well as fully populated with NPC families and Jarl, complete with daily schedules and occupations. 
While there is no special dialogue and no quests to be found in the settlement, Reich Corrigat is still a wonderful place to come visit, buy and sell items, especially stolen items, since the town hosts a fence, which not many places have. You can do some crafting here, and just exploring the town is a gratifying experience. I love all the little details, like the autumn leaves sticking to the stair steps, the hidden valley only accessed by mountain tunnels, and the overall clever usage of platforms and stairways to create a flowing, functional ascent up the mountain. The past two Elder Scrolls games have been slacking when it comes to city design. Flat, wide cities dominate the urban areas in both Cyrodiil and Skyrim, so it's nice to see a little imagination. There's a second reason why I wanted to feature this mod, in addition to the fact that I love it and am inspired by it. I wanted to introduce you to this mod author, Schlitzor. Though their name is hard to pronounce, their mods are easy to like. To date, Schlitzor has eight whole settlement mods, each as interesting as this one. I would highly recommend watching this one's modding career. But what if our Dragonborn needs to do some hunting? Our last mod is for all those bow users out there, and I know there are a lot. A Bow's Whisper, Bow Sound Overhaul by Cat Jill, with 10,000 downloads. As a user of multiple sound mods in the past, I thought I had heard the best when it came to bow and arrow sounds. I was wrong. A bow's whisper provides a rich, detailed variety of sounds for the bow to use. Focusing on a little more realism, this mod exhibits the soundscape of a more well-maintained bow than in the vanilla game. Drawing the string will now be very quiet, with the only prominent sound being the arrow shaft sliding against the bow itself. In fact, there is a very soft, woody theme for the whole mod. Sheathing your bow will give off the sound of your arrow being slid back into the quiver, its wood brushing against the wood of the other arrows, and knocking the bow will give off a small woody click as the arrow and bow meet. The sounds in this mod are top quality, and I can't stop using them since I discovered them. And the cherry on top is the amount of sound variants the mod contains. You'll hear multiple sounds, each playing at different volumes and frequencies. And due to the light ESP this mod uses, it's very compatible with other sound mods. I would say, install this one ASAP. And let's let our Dragonborn take a rest. He's been pretty busy this episode. I cannot thank you guys enough for the insanity that has taken place over the past few weeks. I thought I would be maybe at 200 subscribers at the end of the first month, but here I am at 2500. I appreciate it very much, you guys. Also, the Witcher video is still coming, but as I learn and change how I make my content, I've grown more ambitious about the quality of it, so it may take some time. Oh no, I'm, I'm starting to sound like Joseph Anderson, aren't I? Anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I will see you on next week's Skyrim Mods Hidden Gems.